Okay, so we're going to do softwood cuttings now. So I've got my growing media ready. It's 50% perlite, 50% multi-purpose compost, peat-free. Um, some people prefer using the grit sand instead because, you know, it doesn't disappear this perlite even if you put it on your borders. Some people just don't like the look of it. But it is a kind of uh, processed volcanic rock. So this gives the growing media a lot of aeration for cell division and those delicate roots to push through into the compost. So get that ready beforehand. Uh, we've got a dibber to make our holes. Um, and obviously we need our cutting material. Now, I might have cut it earlier and put it in my bag from outdoor plants, but with pelagonium, which is our named example, obviously, you know, they're a house plant, so I can cut it fresh from the plant. And it's, it's early in the morning, it's had its tomato closed. So this is from Cheadle. Um, we have a lot of stock plants, which is what we, we call these, that we're gonna take our cuttings from. You know, it, it is looking very leggy, but it's overwintered. It's, it is healthy. There's a few dead leaves, but there's no, no disease on there. There's no pests. You know, it is pest and disease free. Um, well, after I've taken my cuttings, it will really be invigorated because I'm going to, you know, cut it down uh, on these stems. And, and all these little uh, short growths are going to obviously side shoot because we've taken away the the apical dominance, you know what I mean? We all know that when we when we prune, we get side shoots. So then it will look, look a lot better and uh, there'll be more side shoots to take cuttings from. So that's our mother plant that we're gonna take our soft wood cutting from. And now is the best time. I could have done it March, um, because obviously these are a greenhouse plant. Um, they'd have put a little bit of growth on. Okay, so, the key thing is when removing it from the mother plant that you cut just above a node. You don't want to leave a little stub on that mother plant because it will die back and you'll get disease coming in. The nodes on this are really close together actually so it's probably difficult for you to see where the actual node is. I'm not going to cut it, um, yeah I do need to cut it low down to get it to bush at the base. I'm going to cut it above that node. Okay, so that is just above a node on there. So, uh, so those side shoots will, will grow now. I can do another cutting of that one. Um, here's one I did a cutting from last year. You can see that's, that's not as woody and leggy. That was a fresh cutting last year, but I can still do cuttings from this one as well. And this was another one I did a cutting of last year, actually, which is flowering beautifully. Um, that is a thing too, that you shouldn't have plant material that's flowering because it's putting energy into flowering rather than making roots. So sometimes you can't um, find a bit of stem that hasn't got a flower on, so just pinch the flower out, but try and choose a non-flowering stem or one that isn't in bud. Okay, so these are scented pelagoniums. I don't actually know what cultivar it is, um, so you know we're talking about true to type we, we do we should really know what the full cultivar name is so here's our plant material um collected early in the morning uh and put into your plastic bag if you're going to do them later on but we're going to do it straight away now with pelagoniums they're a little bit different to a lot of soft tip or soft wood cuttings um i kind of find it unusual that the RHS chooses this as the named example because it does not need covering which most softwood cuttings do um, and it does not need hormone rooting powder because it would tend to get very clogged on the stem so these will survive drought they'll survive no water that's why we have a lot of them at Cheadle because they can survive the summer with very little care and attention so I think out of this, I might be able to get a few cuttings. Actually, I can get one here, one here, one here, and maybe, yes, even one there. I'm going to get maybe four cuttings out of this. So I'm just going to remove one of them. Right, which one? Let's have that one. Right, it doesn't matter where I cut this one at the bottom, obviously, because 
that so i'm going to put that in my bag so it doesn't dry out okay so okay here's our little bit of cutting material the pelargoniums you normally have two or three leaves left the other unusual thing about pelargoniums, I don't, well, you can see them because they're a dark colour. They have these little stipules at the base of the leaf. I think we did mention them in the botany section. Um, these should actually be removed really carefully as well. Anything that's under the soil, or under the compost, has the potential to, you know, um, rot and sort of let fungi in. So your stipules should be removed. If you look at old questions, you'll see that they've mentioned remove the stipules. So normally they're not a brown colour. They've obviously died back over the winter. Um, they're normally green, so um, more difficult to see, but that's good for us. Now, you're going to remove these as delicately as you can without damaging the stem, because obviously that can let pests and diseases in. Um, okay, so we've removed our stipules. Now we need to cut just below a node. Stem, these stem cuttings are nodal cuttings because we're cutting next to a node. So for us to have two or three leaves on, um, I am going to cut here. I'm going to cut just below this node. You can see where the leaf is coming off. So I've got my clean plate my sharp knife and I'm going to cut just below that node. We use a knife because we don't want to damage, we don't want to compress that stem with secateurs and then I'm going to remove that leaf. I'm going to remove this leaf really carefully. You can see where a knife comes in handy now and I'm going to remove this leaf. Okay. As close to the stem as I can, not leaving any little snags, but not damaging the stem. So I've got three leaves left. Okay. Now for soft wood, our cutting should be um, five to ten centimetres long. So that one is eight centimetres. So that's okay. Soft are five to ten, semi ripe. Or 10 to 15 and hardwood can be the whole length of that ruler so that's another thing with the three types of stem cuttings the length varies softwood are your shortest five to ten centimeters long so I've got my cutting ready I do not dip this one in hormone rooting powder so I'm going to make um, a dipper hole for my cutting and usually we'll do a few around the edge of a pot we do them around the edge because the drainage is better. If we did them in the middle, they might not get enough oxygen to the centre for that um, cell division. So we do them around the outside because it's more open. And when we water, you know, the water drains away quicker. So we don't want to just push it in without doing a dibber hole because we'll then clog up the, the xylem vessels and we still want water to be able to go up while it's rooting. So. I've made a little pilot hole. We pop it in and we bury it so that the first, it's buried so that the compost is just below where that first leaf comes out. And all I did was, was just firmed it with two fingers. So I would then carry on going around the container, probably get four in there. And then I would water it and then I would place this, I wouldn't leave it in the full sun in the greenhouse, although it does cope with drought and heat really well. I would probably, if it was fresh, freshly done on a hot day, I would put it outside uh, if it was boiling hot, or I'd put it actually underneath the staging just for a week or so, just so um, it could sort of start to callus up at the base of that stem and start to differentiate and put out its roots. Um, once it started to root, it could go back into the light, but whenever there's full sun, you should try and shade your cuttings a little bit because they would not be able to cope even with a bag over. So that is your pelagonium cutting. So pelagonium zonal is your named example in the notes. That's your bedding upright, pelagonium with a nice 
multicolored leaves. This is a scented pelargonium. You could give this as example if you can look up a named a named cultivar for a scented pelargonium. So that is um, soft wood cuttings. We could also do fuchsia as a soft wood cutting as well. Um, if you buy a young fuchsia plant, this is ideal plant material. I'm just going to take a cutting really quickly. I'm going to cut just above a node on the parent plant. There's my plant material. I am going to cut then just below this node here with my sharp knife. Then I'm going to remove the bottom leaves. Now, if I remove these two, I've only got two very puny little leaves and these will still be photosynthesizing. So another thing you can do is actually cut through larger leaves. So you've still got the surface area, um, but not too big, you know, it's not transpiring too much. So you can still be photosynthesizing, but not um, losing too much water. And then I would definitely, I would dip this one into hormone rooting powder. You should always decant a little bit, oops, a little bit, so you're not contaminating your original pot. And you're gonna dip it in at the base because, oops, the roots do form where the nodes are, okay? So we've only got one node. The next node is, obviously the leaves are still on it. We've just got one node on that one. And then tap it off. And then we do exactly the same thing. So let's just remove that pelagonia. We'd make our dipper hole. We'd firm it in so it's um, just below where the first two leaves um, emerge. And with this one, we do need a bag over the top. Or we could put it into a propagator with a lid over the top. A heated propagator is perfect for stem cuttings because you've got the heat at the base and it will make those cell set cells divide quicker as well. So the ideal place for this would be in a heated propagator with bottom heat, a lid over the top, but again, not in full sun. You would have some shade netting over your polytunnel or greenhouse or over your propagator um, to stop it baking in the sun, uh, even moving it outside um, you know, in an in a amateur greenhouse if, it, if it's a really hot day. Um, so there we have it, softwood cuttings.